Welcome back, everybody. This is Bob Calvert, again reporting here in Iraq. Uh, we're with the 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 3rd ID, um, out of Fort Benning, Georgia. And we're talking with uh, Staff Sergeant Natalie Hedrick. Uh, she is a public affairs officer. She's the NCOI senior. Behind the camera is Anna Sophie Hickson. Well, first I want to thank our sponsors, newsblaze.com, militaryconnection.com, freedomhunters.org, or Burgess.com, number5jump.com, soldiersangels.org, and broadbandforamerica.com. And you'll see their names scrolling on uh, this episode and a couple more that'll follow. And uh, check their websites out. If you get a chance, send them an email and thank them for helping make this trip happen so we can get our troop stories back to America. And uh, so what I'd like to do now is introduce Staff Sergeant Natalie Hedrick. Welcome. Hedrick, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. okay. So welcome to Talking with Heroes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. Thank you. Privilege. Uh, thank you for your service, Bill Hedrick. Thank you for your support. <laughs> and uh, so tell our listeners, people who are watching us, a little bit about yourself and how long you've served. And, um, and we'll talk about that. I know you've been on three deployments for Iraq, so we'll talk a little bit about that later, too. Okay. Um, you can if you want to. Okay. Getting out, my last day is Christmas Day, 2010. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I've been there my whole life, except for when I joined the Army and moved to Columbus, Georgia. Um, and I have no children, but I have a husband who's here in Iraq with me. He's not on the same base as me. Uh, he's on uh, Cos Echo with the 115 Infantry. And um, my parents are anxious, anxiously awaiting my arrival. They, this is their third time walking. So will you be going back pretty much the same time, or with your husband? Uh, no, he's going back a couple days before me, no, or ten days before me. So. so since you are fairly close, do you get to see each other once in a while? Or? I, with my job as public affairs at CO, um, I, I can travel. I have the luxury of traveling, so I try to make it out there as much as possible. And he does come here sometimes. That's great. I wish we had had the opportunity to have you both together. It's always nice to meet you when you do yeah, every time we have reported to public affairs, they find out that my husband's yeah. not here with me and we, they want to talk to him, too. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's not. That's okay. Say <laughs> so, hi. Yes. Oh, say hi to my husband. <laughs> Adam Hedrick. Staff <laughs> Sergeant Hedrick. And uh, you, uh, we were talking before we went on the air, you've been here on three deployments to Iraq, right? Yes, three deployments, all with the third grade. All I've, I've been in this office, this uh, section of public affairs, for all You have an interesting perspective that you can share. I, what we're trying to do is bring back to America this transition story, the progress stories. So if you don't mind, go back to your first deployment. Talk about what it was like around here in Iraq. And then the changes you saw happen when you came back the second time and then go on to the third time. Okay, yeah. Um, I was here in OIF 3, which was gosh, 2005. And it was a lot different. Um, my job was a lot different, too. As far as, oh, we did cover the stories, we had a lot more media come out to see the soldiers. I guess because Iraq was the big thing right now, and so we don't have as many reporters. But on my off time, I would serve as a gunner uh, for civil affairs. So there was a lot of, a lot more combat, a lot more me rolling out. Um, and it's funny because that at that time, I mean, I've been hit with IEDs during that deployment, um, a lot more than I have now. A little bit over 30 soldiers. The second deployment, we lost a little over 30 soldiers. But this deployment has been a blessing um, as far as, I mean, no, no soldier's life is, you know, to be over there, right? But um, this deployment, the number drops significantly. But coming into this deployment, you know, I was still worried, like, because all I've known is, okay, well, I've got 30 names that I have to make room for. Second time I was over here, it was uh, a lot busier. Um, we were part of the surge, so we had that extra three months to, to do what we do. And it was like the it was like the enemy got a little smart than my first deployment. Um, but there was a lot more to do. Time flew by a lot faster because we were busier. Uh, the mission was still to go out. We were still at that. 
danger. Um, we were still not so much in the lead as we were in OAF 3, but we were still, uh, we still went out without the Iraqis sometimes. We still went on combat missions. We still did court on searches and stuff like that. But this one is really not really into that at all. Now it's more of a PRT, the Preventive Reconstruction Team uh, mission. They go out and they kind of help the economy. They help build things. They give the Iraqis the tools that they need to succeed far beyond what you need. Can you talk about any specific projects? There's been a bunch. And really, uh, OIF 3, the first one, there was projects then too. A lot of it's schools. Um, we, we build schools. We uh, refinish schools. We provide them with school supplies. And we uh, desks. Um, there's a lot of we do for like farmers, like uh, give them equipment, we uh, help them with um, things that work in the United States that they not, might not be aware of. Last time we did a lot of windmills, which is something that the area that we were in, they didn't have any windmills. So when we showed them what it does, how it can uh, conduct energy and stuff, they really enjoyed that. We do micro grant type stuff uh, where we give them money to start their own business and do that uh, with the lawyers around here. Have you seen less violence on this planet? It sounds like we have, right? and especially around the communities. Yeah, I haven't been out as much okay. this deployment, which is, is welcome. The last few deployments are kind of wearing me out. But um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen less violence there. Like I said before, on average, we would use purchase of each yeah. deployment, so this one is a lot better. So what do you do as a public affairs officer on this deployment? <laughs> well, on this deployment, uh, right now, I since I'm in COIC, I kind of step back away from my public affairs role, and I just take care of my section. Um, I have to make sure that they're up to date on all their paperwork, on their PT tests, on their weapons qualification, make sure that they have everything that they need to conduct the public affairs mission. And I also help out where I can as far as that goes. I don't want uh, my soldiers to get too overwhelmed with their, their work. Right now I'm working on the yearbook. So uh, we had one writer that went home, so right now I'm kind of the writer editor of this yearbook and uh, got in pictures for that and it's kind of helping the time fly by because I know I have about two months left or a month and a half left but I have this project that I have to do so some days I wish the time would just slow down a little bit so that I could get this project done. So the yearbook is, is uh, writings from different soldiers and pictures? Well I've changed it up a little bit. The previous years we had a lot of writing as far as the history of each unit what they did that deployment, but I kind of made it my own. Uh, we do this magazine called The Hammer Times, and we did that monthly. So what I did for the yearbook was I just took the Hammer Times layout and I changed it up so that it's not necessarily the stories that we're writing, but it's pictures so that people can go back and remember a certain event. And we also included some quotes from soldiers just about the deployment. So it's kind of a personal touch instead of a, a formal news. Would it be fair to say then that on this deployment you've seen a lot of progress? Uh, you've been hearing a lot more now about the transition. I have. Oh, I absolutely have. Uh, the first, my first deployment, I, w I went out with uh, on a lot of training events where this, the Iraqis were kind of part of our training. Like we weren't there to train them; they were just kind of attached to us, and they learned a lot. But they weren't anywhere near where they are today. I, I feel comfortable with them. Feel confident that uh, if, that they've got my back. You know, when I do go out, um, they're usually in the lead, and I feel confident with that. Okay. Uh, what about care packages, letters? Talk about that. Okay, uh, I love care packages. Um, now my parents are old pros at this because this is my third deployment, so they know exactly what I need. They know exactly what to send, and a lot of it. I don't want to say that. Um, the PS here, the, the little shop that we have here, does a bad job because they do a great job of supplying us with stuff. But there's all those things that you miss by home to just like certain brands of shampoo, makeup. Um, yes, I wear makeup out here. <laughs> it's a little something that makes me happy. <laughs> um, just different things that maybe they don't think of, or they've got you know 
this, um, what, what organization is it? Is it okay if I say that? Yeah, yeah. please. Any soldier.com. Any, any soldier.com. Any soldier.com. Right. Huh? That's one of the important. He gets, yeah, yeah, he gets packages, like, every week. All he does is write down what he wants, and they'll send it to him. And when he gets a package, it's like a present for all of us, you know? We're all excited to see what's in it, because I've asked for things. Um, he gets cigars. He gets whatever he wants, MP3 players. We're going to talk to Eric probably the next day or two. Great. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. What's interesting with Eric is that he, he's the one that called in earlier this year before from Afghanistan and talked to us on the, on the air. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's planning his trip for months. Yeah, he said that uh, he wasn't. He didn't expect you guys to actually be out here. He said, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, I was planning on going to Iraq and then Afghanistan. But when we came down to the funds, we had, we had to do Afghanistan. Yeah, well, like I said before, we had a lot of media come, and you know, I have three and I have five, but this deployment doesn't work. I mean, welcome. Like, we're so happy to see you. <laughs> we actually used to do that part of our job, too. Well, I may see you before Bennington. I heard you're, you're working, yeah. You're working on some things. Yeah, I heard you're coming. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Where's Captain Barrett? Sir. <laughs> Just kidding. Fire. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so care packages are good. You get letters, schools, um, churches back home. Yeah, we, we in the care packages, we get a lot of like the school kids writing, writing letters. One uh, school, I think it was, sent a box of blank Father's Day cards to send out to all the soldiers here, which was kind of cool. Um, we get a lot of generic letters. We don't get much family letters anymore because it's the internet now, you know, but, yeah. but I mean, I get my cards in the internet, too, so it's something to keep show. It's a problem to hear the post office talking about a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure, yeah. Okay. All right, well, um, let's go ahead and take a break, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go into a second segment because we're getting all this on YouTube. Right? Okay, yeah. okay, we'll be right back. Once again, folks, it's Bob Calvary, your host, talking with Heroes.com. I'm reporting here from Iraq. We'll be back with part two um, with Staff Sergeant Natalie Hecker. Yes. <laughs>